Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about Arch and Manjaro. Many people love Manjaro as a clean and easy way to get into Arch or even Linux in general. But there are many who claim that Manjaro has diverted too far away from Arch to give it that consideration. So today we're going to be going through that, what both Arch and Manjaro are, how they're different, and why more people might need to make the distinction that Manjaro isn't Arch. So first, what is Arch? Arch is an independent rolling release distribution that is known for being very customizable and bleeding edge, but not for being as easy to install. Basically, your hand isn't held at all, and you are forced to either learn how to install your system manually from scratch, including partitioning through the terminal, installing the actual Linux kernel, and setting up your bootloader and desktop environments. Basically, the customizable feature isn't really an option because you are going to be building your system. There is a TUI installer being worked on, but it's not finished as of recording this video, and it's still in the experimental stages. And even with that, Arch still doesn't hold your hand during regular usage. Every once in a while, there will be an update that requires manual intervention during the update in order to fix something. In fact, going to the homepage of Arch, most of the latest news posts are things telling users that they need to manually intervene to fix an update. Now, this does make Arch sound terrible, but it's actually quite cool when you really get into Linux because you configure your system almost however you want. Arch is also popular thanks to its amazing wiki for documentation and the Arch user repository, which has loads of community-driven and user-generated packages and installation scripts. So now let's quickly go over what is Manjaro. Manjaro is another rolling release distribution based on top of Arch and it has many similarities. Manjaro is closer to a more traditional distribution that you just install like Ubuntu, Linux, Mint, Fedora, so on and so forth. It comes with its own set of packages and some of the packages may be slightly older because Manjaro holds back packages until they are fully tested. They do this with three repositories, stable, testing, and unstable, each with progressively newer and less tested packages. Unstable would be the closest to Arch, but like Arch, you're on your own if something goes wrong. Manjaro should, in theory, be easier to run than Arch because it has the more stable package-based, pre-installed tools such as Pamac for installing packages, and also you don't have the issue where every time you need to do almost any task, you have to know what package you need and decide between the options of what package you're going to install to do the job. Manjaro pre-installs almost anything you need to do basic work, which makes it easier for Linux beginners. Although I still wouldn't call Manjaro a beginner distribution because it's still technically considered to be an Arch-based system. Now I will note the application's pre-install depends on the desktop environment and the actual edition you choose. And even in Arch, some desktop environments, such as KDE Plasma, will have specific commands that will grab nearly all the packages you'll need from that ecosystem to get started. Before we dive into the similarities and differences, I'm going to need to thank the sponsor of today's video, the Node. Now, they don't have a Manjaro option, but they do have Arch. So theoretically, you could go ahead and build a website on an Arch server and proudly display that this website runs Arch, by the way. Of course, there are more reasonable server distro options, and even better, there are one-click installers for game servers, websites, and Nextcloud instance, really whatever you need. They have great customer support, an easy-to-use dashboard, and starting at just $5 a month, it's very affordable. And to make it even more affordable, check out the link down below or head over to linode.com forward slash techhut for a $100 60 day credit. Now, given that Manjaro is Arch based, there are still a few more similarities to cover. They both use Pacman as the default package manager. They both have uh, relatively newer packages compared to other distros. Although Arch will always have slightly more bleeding edge software, they both support things like the AUR, which in my opinion is the primary selling point for any Arch based system. And usually if you have a bug on Manjaro, there is a solution on the Arch Wiki. Eight times out of 10, the Arch fix should also work on Manjaro, although asking a Manjaro question on any Arch-related chat might get you laughed out. However, many people treat Manjaro just like it's Arch with an installer, and that's like calling Ubuntu Debian with a different installer. It could be argued Manjaro and Arch are completely different things. There are loads of differences between Manjaro and Arch, just how there are loads of differences between Ubuntu and 
Debian. The main key difference being the packages, since Manjaro uses its own repositories compared to Arch, this can and probably will lead to some things just straight up breaking. For example, you do have to be careful when you're using an AUR package on Manjaro because AUR packages are built to run on Arch. So if you're running it on Manjaro and the AUR package requires a dependency that is newer than what is on your Manjaro system, it could break the package or even worse, depending on what you pulled from the AUR, your entire system. Manjaro also has its own package management system in addition to Pac-Man called Pamac. And yes, the naming scheme is not very helpful. Pamac includes a GUI front end for package management and a CLI utility that is slightly easier to understand compared to Pac-Man. For example, a system update is Pamac update instead of the Pacman syu that you see in Arch. But it does have both of them, so you can interchange this however you see fit. Honestly, I love Pamac and I do find myself installing it on vanilla Arch or any other Arch based distribution, as it does include the GUI, its very own AUR helper, and options for other formats like Snap and Flatpak. On top of that, Manjaro has a bunch of distribution specific things, such as its own separate settings manager with several tools. This includes a tool to help you automatically install hardware drivers, and there's a kernel tool that will allow you to switch between kernels with a graphical interface. Basically, just treat Manjaro and Arch like Debian and Ubuntu. Basically, don't install Manjaro because you want an Arch-based system. Install Manjaro because you want to install Manjaro. Manjaro definitely has its benefits and there is nothing wrong with using it. For example, I think that they create some of the best GNOME customizations out of the box. And if you're looking for an Arch-based distro, there are certainly distros out there that are just Arch with an installer, or at least a lot closer to vanilla Arch. So if you do want an Arch-based system, I'd recommend one of those instead. Some of those would include distros such as Endeavor OS. Endeavor OS is very close to vanilla Arch and is essentially Arch just with a much better installer and a convenient welcome app for configuring the system and setting it up. There's also distros like the Arch Linux GUI, there's Artix, and a lot more. You could also just straight up use a script to help you install it, like the pre-installed CLI script we mentioned earlier, or others such as AUI and ArchFi. So if you're looking for a distro that is Arch with an installer, there are better options in my opinion. And if you're looking for more information, I have my Endeavor OS comparison, which I do recommend you check out. And of course, Manjaro does have its place and use cases, so no problem if you use Manjaro, but it seems to be mismarketed as a distro by a lot of Linux people as something to use if you want to get something Arch based. And I'm starting to disagree with this. What do you think? Let us know down below. With all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.